Welcome back. So, all excitement for 10.1 aside, 10.07 is actually out next week, and among with it, with other things, there's a huge wave of class changes. So, who wins? Who loses? Is the Paladin rework going to cause every group to have multiple Retribution Paladins for the rest of the bloody expansion? I mean, they are, they're even getting an ability combo, which is pretty damn cool, just like this sponsor combo. Buyraycon.com forward slash Bellular. That is where you can go to get 15% off site-wide. The link is down below. And it's no wonder that their leading everyday earbuds that I've got on right now have over 50,000 five-star reviews. But if you say want the fitness buds, which step up the water resistance from IPX6 to IPX7, or the low latency gaming buds, then they've got you covered with those as well. The look and the feel is premium and absurdly comfortable. I mean, almost a custom fit with the included five sets of silicone tips, which just mean you can get it perfectly. And of course, if I shake my head about, they obviously do stay in and being half the price of the usual suspects with brilliant passive isolation is just fantastic. The buds also last twice as long as my last one, so these really are just perfect for, well, for me, actually lasting the whole workday. They will auto pair for life and reconnect instantly with a 33 foot range, which is so damn handy just day to day. They've got great touch controls for playback, volume, sound profiles, and of course your digital assistance. And they will even auto play pause whenever you remove them from your ear. So, if you go to buyraycom.com forward slash bellular, then uh, yeah, you're going to get 15% off your first order. There are four gorgeous colors to choose from for the everyday buds, carbon black, electric blue, flare red, and rose gold. They look great. So, thanks Raycom for sponsoring. And with that said, let's go. All right, smooth segues aside, let's talk about Paladin. I think we have to do that first, because in what I can only describe as a truly unprecedented move for Blizzard, a spec is going from being violently hated to actually getting an exciting rework without having to wait an entire expansion, which is amazing. I mean, hell, they don't even have to wait for a major patch. We're getting it in a minor one. Red Paladin is an absolute and utter success, though it is not without a few quirks. But still, if every spec got this kind of treatment, we would be absolutely off to the races. The most outstanding thing about it is actually that it happened. But the second important thing uh, about this rework is that it actually does succeed in adding an entirely new concept to the game, and that is combos. It's simple. Templar Strike is a new talent that changes Crusader Strike into a two-part combo. It starts off as a Templar Strike, uh, then when pressed, the same button actually turns into Templar Slash, which is an ability with a different animation. Okay, it's a small enough change, but it feels a little bit different, and it goes a long way to making filler feel a bit more fun to press. But while that's neat and all, there's a lot of other things to talk about. So, to boil down a lot of changes very, very quickly, Yes, they keep their same fundamentals. That means Crusader Strike, Judgment, Blade of Justice, Wings, and uh, the same Spenders and cooldowns. But they now have just way more interesting interactions and a whole ton of new options, like Templar Strikes, which we just covered. And it gives you a bit more filler to press. And it's on a choice note with Crusading Strikes, which basically turns Crusader Strike into a passive, like with uh, Warrior and Demon Hunter filler. So I guess that's pretty good if you want to bust some RSI. You can make Consecration drop automatically if you want when pressing Blade or uh, replace it, maybe, with Divine Hammer, which is on a 20 second cooldown. Basically, fewer buttons if you want, or more. There's even options to customize where you put some cooldown reduction, uh, Judgment and Crusader Strike, or Blade. You can double the holy power generation of Judgment and Blade, or you can give them two charges instead to fill, you know, every last GCD. There's actually quite a lot of gameplay texture that the player can now modify for themselves. And one of the smartest things that they've done 
is they've totally solved the retribution mastery issue. That is, their mastery buffs holy damage by a lot, but then the few abilities that don't do holy feel pretty terrible as a result. So now they've got two options. Turn most of their physical single target abilities into holy strike, which benefits from everything holy and physical, um, so that's pretty good with like the mastery, penetrating armor, even getting the same benefit from the 5% damage increase that you'll be getting from both the monk and demon hunter debuffs. Or they can do the same to most of their AoE abilities, except it's called radiant damage, which is holy and fire instead. So it's a smart enough way for Blizzard to keep the flavor while solving the issues. They also have some other major issues fixed. One was how bursty they were but then they were a complete wet noodle outside of uh, you know their very tiny cooldown window because basically of a whole bunch of stacking cooldowns. Now then, Final Reckoning and Execution Sentence are on a choice note, meaning that you do not need to stack both for a few seconds of huge damage at the expense of feeling really weak outside of that. For the rotation then, this basically means a lot of the worst issues have been cleaned up for them. You can swim in buttons, press a lot fewer buttons if you want, or anything in between. It's pretty much all up to your build. Your filler is either going to be gone or more fun, your burst is there, but it's less dominating on the overall damage profile, and you've generally got passive interactions that feel pretty damn good. On the defensive side of things then, Blizzard said that, uh, well, they're actually the class with the highest death rate, which considering that they can self-heal, have divine shield, and wear plate, was really quite a bizarre thing, but it is what Blizzard said. Uh, who knows, maybe that's down to the Rat Paladins, but whatever, the data does not lie. So it's been time for buffs. Now, you've got divine protection and shield of vengeance, as well as a new choice between an automatic free word of glory at 25% HP, or a flash of light that is buffed and instant, but with a cooldown. So finally, Rhett's probably going to feel as sturdy as it should. Next then, utility and movement, which have been a sticking issue. So, Unbound Freedom should go far, it's 30% move speed with freedom, and the talent that added one second to Divine Steed now adds two seconds. So this is nothing insane, but uh, it's an improvement, it'll do. Then we've got the new reworked Rat Aura, which is really awesome as well. Basically, anytime a raid member takes 30% of their HP as damage uh, at once, the raid gets 5% damage and healing, which will then decay over 30 seconds. Now this should basically have very, very high uptime, and that will keep the flavor of Rat Aura around, but it actually will work a bit more like a standard group buff then the class tree also has a talent that gives Divine Storm a 3% max HP heal for you and four of your friends, which, you know, isn't the biggest in the world, but it will actually you know, will stack up since it is just passive, uh, passive healing. So yeah, so that does leave it with the actual fantasy of being a tanky melee DPS with strong off healing. Uh, that's actually quite a real fantasy. I mean, they even bothered to fix the worst parts of the class tree with Divine Toll actually moving over there, uh, Seraphim moving out of there, at long last, and Dusk and Dawn being fixed instead of a maintenance buff to keep up with some real usability issues now it is something that basically happens automatically as you play. Yes, the gameplay is lost, but, well, most people hated it anyway, so now it's just a cool passive. As to whether they're actually strong or not, we obviously have to wait until the patch goes live. Tuning could obviously ruin everything we've talked about here, and it could limit the choice that technically has been granted with the core design changes here but I will say that on the design and playability front, this is a massive win. Paladins, they've finally given you what you uh, really did deserve. I mean, for the longest time in our stream, we had we had Paladins super chatting to like, just say, hey, Paladins, we're, we're scuffed. Like, it was really big within the Paladin community. This is really the gold standard for taking a look at a spec during an expansion that players are taking issue with. It is, yes, familiar, but it is obscenely better. A fun part then is that Prot and Holy are also getting a bunch of changes too, since of course the class tree did need quite a lot of work. Protection is getting some general buffs and talent shuffles with a new talent uh, buffing Eye of Tear, and one that heals them when they heal others with Word of Glory, which is pretty sweet. 
I mean, yeah, so that's nice. Generally pretty sweet changes overall. The one real nice change is focused enmity. It used to make Avenger Shield only hit one target, but do double damage. Now it does double damage when it hits one target, but it still can hit multiple, which is nice. Holy then just mostly benefits from the class tree changes and Blessing of Dusk and Dawn being fixed, but uh, it is nice all the same. Anyway, Paladins, you obviously get to be in the winners category. But of course, what about the other winners and then the losers? I've got to be real with you, almost anyone who gets a change in this patch is just winning, though some more so than others. So let's go through them. Frost DK sees a nice talent tree reshuffle and some more freedom with points, as well as runic power costs going up and damage going up to match for both Frost Strike and Breath. Basically, it is trying to uh, bring, basically bring the reliance on insanely long Breath of Syndragosis down and make it harder to overcap with obliteration builds. They basically have too much runic power right now, and obviously the Breath of Syndragosa thing, like, a lot of players do not like that, and really no joke, like, Frost DKs can, they can keep Breath up for entire fights, and if that ends up going wrong, they lose a pretty insane amount of damage, so it just hasn't really worked out for a lot of people. Ultimately, then, this should result in similar damage, but a bit less risk and a bit more burst, which I suppose will be nice enough for Mythic Plus, and uh, when it's needed in Raid. In other news then, a new talent letting Killing Machines stack twice is pretty brilliant. That, well, may I suppose be Obliteration's time to shine too. On Holy DK then, you are getting a minor shuffle of Defile to basically make it a lot more attractive as well as a buff and some nice bug fixes to Commander of the Dead. Mostly, it is pulling talents together which may open up some new build options for you, which is pretty good. Resto Shamans. Okay, they in particular are getting quite a lot here. Their class tree is getting a bunch of buffs and good shuffles across the board. So essentially they're able to pick up a bit more utility, which is real nice. The spec itself is then getting a ton of extra damage on their spells, um, though it does come at the cost of a chunky Acid Rain nerf, uh, a few talents moved to baseline, and a few new ones in their place. And some of these are really cool. There's a Manatide Totem buff that gives them a 10 second window of cheap and fast heals. So that I think will be quite fun to play with. And there's some nice ones that buff Healing Tide as well. Basically, it's a lot of minor issues fixed too, like, say, Earth Shield getting some damage reduction, and uh, of course, just a flat 8% buff to healing, which will feel better. <laughs> all in all then, Blizzard seem to have done a fairly good job at rescuing a spec that otherwise was, yes, yeah, sort of teetering into the trash can with Dragonflight, so maybe it is a little bit more their time to shine. For the Havoc DH, then you get your talented Eye Beam duration brought down, but the damage brought up. So it doesn't last as long, but the damage sort of compensates there. I think it ends up being a slight nerf to Fury Generation, but what it does do is it saves one global cooldown and it does reduce the likelihood of maybe mistakes with early cancels or, you know, just getting swirlied in a raid. So overall, I think better. Fodder then also got some small fixes like spawning closer and the soul it drops coming uh, even closer to the DH. You know, tiny changes, but it's keyhole surgery. You know, it's uh, minimum impact, maximum, uh, I guess, result. That's the analogy, whatever. Resto Druid time. All right, Resto, they've been the kings of healing and they're getting some nice stuff, like a new talent allowing clear casting to stack, um, hopefully helping their mana issues, and the return of deep focus, which opens up some insane single target uh, focus damage, though their reshuffle targets a popular Mythic Plus build, and uh, does make that a little bit, like, just more awkward, I guess. I suppose Blizzard just didn't like their dominance there. Uh, they are, of course, the most popular healer in the game right now, so, you know, if you're at the top of the hill, you kind of have to expect you'll be knocked down a bit, we're still going to call this a winner though, because some things are a bit better and uh, you know, you're not really being hit that hard. Mistweaver then, Mistweaver is getting plenty of love. Some issues arose with their new talent in the last patch and those are basically being solved so they can target the buff that they want instead of getting some numbers uh, turned up. 
And then Thunder Focus T gives them instant enveloping mists and their Celestials actually get a new absorb element. So overall, great changes, but they are still quite underrepresented in gameplay, so they do kind of need it. Windwalker then is getting a lot more max energy from Inner Peace, and they're getting a choice. Yes, a choice between Skyreach, the Tiger Pam Dash, and Sky Touch, which is a version with the same effect, but without the Micro Dash. Skyreach is cool, of course, but an option that stops monks from, you know, screeching in fear every time that it dashes them into a mechanic, uh, that is also quite nice. Again, minor wins, but wins nonetheless. Warlock time. Oh boy. There's really a lot of shuffling in the class tree for the Warlocks and a few changes basically trying to get it to work. As Blizzard notes, niche defensives are being removed and some basic throughput uh, is actually going there in its place. It should act as an overall buff to them, and uh, honestly, they probably won't notice the things that they're missing. Uh, I mean, their warlocks are still not going to die. Uh, once again, though, massive buffs to the capstone talents. So maybe they'll actually be exciting now. I mean, probably not, but yeah, it is what it is. To go into their specs then, Affliction Warlock does seem like a, a bit of a win. But honestly, Warlock is kind of so all over the place that it is hard to tell. Uh, but now basically Dark Glare scales better in single target, which does make it a stronger AoE option because of Grim Reach. Your um, Instant Corruption then is baseline instead of a talent with some basic extra damage being in its place. And then Dread Touch, the single target capstone option for Rapture Spam, that uh, lasts a bit longer, so it is stronger and it is easier to maintain, which people will probably like. Generally, it seems to uh, shuffle their chosen builds around just a little bit for single target and AoE, and it looks like uh, kind of for the better overall. They definitely did need it, though. As for the Demo Lock, well, you are getting your Demonic Tyrant substantially buffed, but you're actually losing the Dreadstalker Reset talent. They're also getting a nice guillotine buff for AoE and a new capstone choice that will increase single target damage entirely passively. Uh, basically, Blizzard's goal here seems to have been uh, deprioritizing the rather complicated Demo single target build with Nether Portal and Grand Warlock's design. And that seems to have worked, so if that is in your favor, then nice. Beast Mastery Hunter, then. So obviously it's been a major victim, the prime victim, of the Razageth bow being nerfed in this patch, because basically Blizzard realized way too late that the bow was way too powerful for being just one rare item, and it especially made the pets more powerful. So basically what Blizzard are doing is a significant buff to make up for the bow, which of course means that if you didn't get the bow, enjoy a hefty damage increase on single target and AoE. Um, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's, basically, that's basically it. Nice buffs to make up uh, for, uh, you know, nice buffs to make up for the bow uh, snafu. So basically, that's it for the winners. There are minor wins for the most part, but hey, they are wins nonetheless, so we do have to put them in that category. Now though, it is time for the fun part, or as an ex-hunter main, uh, the frustrating part. So losers then, starting off with the marksmanship hunter. Now I will disclose my bias here. I do not fundamentally really like the BFA onward rework. I did prefer the Legion gameplay of MM Hunter. Uh, what we are seeing with this patch, though, is broadly the same deal as with BM, except that instead of such a huge buff, they are only getting a 2-3% to buff because, obviously, the Razageth bow bug didn't benefit them as much. Uh, and also, some talent connections give them a little bit more survivability, which is nice. Uh, but I really think that this one needs a lot more work. Maybe, maybe a paladin amount of work, maybe a, not a paladin amount of work, but still, it, I think it just needs some work. Um, I mean, even the removal of double tap in 10.05, like, there was buffs to, there were buffs to compensate, but I think a lot of players didn't particularly um, enjoy that. I don't know, I, I just think that marksmanship is honestly uh, just a little bit lost, and I'm not really sure... I'm not sure Blizzard has a clear pathway to making this current playstyle, like, way better. Um, yeah. 
there's obviously room though in 10 one to uh, to make things you know further better still um, I've heard some stuff along the lines of say a kill shot giving you a trick shot uh, charge which is pretty sweet um, but as for 1005 not a whole lot uh, the utility is also I think quite lacking compared to maybe where a hunter should be and overall I think they do just feel a little bit ignored Preservation Evokers then, okay, yes, you guys are uh, definitely the loser category. You're getting a talent redesign so that instead of your AoE increasing your echo healing, echo increases AoE healing, which uh, does seem a lot more useful now, though the reason why you're in the losers category is a pretty good reason because your numbers are just being dropped off a cliff. Yeah. Uh, they also did lose what a lot of very good players consider to be a very high skill cap thing. Uh, basically, Golden Hour and Lifebind used to treat echoes applied by Temporal Anomaly when buffed by Resonating Sphere as full echoes. But the thing is that instead of being treated as full echoes, they were actually supposed to be 30% effectiveness. So you can imagine then that with ideal ramping, you could do some utterly insane healing but overall, it does seem that that was an unintended thing. So that is a fairly serious nerf for Raid and Mythic Plus, but it also does seem like it is one that brings them down to the level of other healers. And uh, well, the go-to talent builds will almost uh, certainly be a little bit different. So you are in the losers category, but a part of that is just because Preservation Evoker was giga strong initially. Survival Hunter then. It is getting very tiny buffs as a byproduct of the Hunter General buffs, but otherwise, I think they are still alone in the wilderness, rather unloved. Uh, no utility advantages basically make up for becoming the melee hunter versus the other hunters, especially like BM, which basically gets to be a ranged melee and how they can just always run and move when they're casting. Um, I think there's not enough damage to maybe make them feel worth playing over any of the other melee. You know, it's not terrible. It is totally playable. It's just another patch where there probably could have been an opportunity to give a consolation prize to the survival hunters, but there, there isn't. Um, I would say at least if, you know, if the big issues of the spec can't be fixed, maybe just giving them a little bit of a buff to reward the players who are sticking through it, uh, you know, that maybe would be nice. Guardian Druid then, yeah, so we all did get a little excited that uh, in 10.05 you got your AoE rage dump, but uh, there still are big issues with Guardian. It basically loses because it's just in a bad place and this patch does absolutely nothing to help it out. It's just one of those specs that sticks out. It's basically the worst tank in the game in terms of its tankiness, damage, and gameplay right now with really no solutions being offered. Uh, like with survival, it's not unplayable or anything. Uh, maybe you will actually really quite like it, especially if you like the fantasy. It's just that you'll be doing a good bit more work for less results than literally anybody else. So yeah, they, they get to be a loser because they're one of the things that stands out. Of course, my hope though, is that seeing what just happened with the Retribution Paladin, then maybe the likes of, well, Survival and Guardian, perhaps especially Guardian, maybe it shows that they could be a bit more in line for a change in perhaps 10.15 or 10.17. So that's it for the big losers then. If the class that you wanted to know about has not been mentioned in this video, then assume that it is pretty much the same as it was before. If it already sucked and it wasn't touched, then it would be in our loser pile. So that means you're probably in the clear. Now, the only complicated one is Mage, because the Mage specs seem to be uh, riding that line, perhaps, between perfectly fine and needing love. But it sort of depends on who you ask. I'd maybe suggest Mages as a whole are maybe minor losers. Um, I don't mean Mages are losers, I mean in the loser category. But again, that's uh, just down to not getting any attention when perhaps they need just a little bit in order to feel good. Uh, to touch on the rogues, the rogues are more or less fine, and any issues there aren't major enough to warrant calling them out. Uh, priests got a small handful of changes, but uh, none of them are giga meaningful except for a few holy talents being buffed, and a shadow priest rework is actually coming up in 10.1. It seems to be a bit mixed right now, but obviously it's very early days, so we'll have to see how it pans out. And I guess then all this means that we'll probably have to make a similar video to this one in maybe two months, because yeah, Tan 1 is going to have a bunch of class changes. And this idea of having class changes within an expansion is just great. I mean, what a world. So much better than the last uh, two expansions. So 
thumbs up to Blizz. Credit where it's due, absolutely. Thanks team for watching, of course, and uh, hey, enjoy playing that Rat Paladin in 1007, because I think everybody else will, and uh, honestly, I, I know I will, because, uh, well, I, I feel like they, they went to the effort. I'm going to meet them, you know, I'm going to meet them there and actually give it a shot. Properly play it. Ah, oh, dear. All right. Good news. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.